What's going on, everybody? Welcome to How To Tuesday. Taking questions all week. We've been getting some really good ones from Instagram. And uh, you can always email me the questions as well, podcast at saltwaterexperience.com. Not everybody is an Instagram person, but if you are, you can tag me over there, Tom underscore Roland. So either email or Instagram works. One of the questions that I liked this week that I thought I could give a pretty good answer to was someone that's kind of new to fly fishing and they're wondering how they go about picking a bonefish fly. You walk into the store, there's a ton of different bonefish flies. You look at the different books, like, you know, any of the, any of the books on fly tying, there's tons of different things. So is it like trout fishing where you're trying to match the hatch and you need to know exactly what they're eating or are you selecting your flies some other way, right? And so it's a little bit of both, right? As you, as you start to bonefish and you're around bonefish and you're walking on bonefish flats, you see little creatures that bonefish are eating, little crabs, little shrimp, little worms, little things that, that bonefish eat. But bonefish are kind of a curious fish. They are a fish that if they're moving along and kind of grazing and something jumps away from them, they're going to eat it, right? If they can catch it, they're going to eat it. So your fly doesn't have to look exactly like something. You have tons of flies, like even, even a crazy Charlie style fly, like this guy right here. I mean, it kind of looks like a shrimp. It kind of looks like some other stuff. But for the most part, it's just a creature that is going to be on the bottom and it's going to scurry out of the way and a bonefish is going to go over there and eat it. Eat it. it looks natural enough. Uh, I think when you t step up to permit fishing, now you're going to really need to need to be much more careful about what you're choosing to throw. Bonefish are kind of fun. Redfish are kind of like this. You can throw a lot of different things at them, and they're going to eat things that look nothing like anything that lives on the flat. But because you presented it correctly, you're going to be able to get a bite. So that being said, it is important kind of what the what the fly looks like. It's important. I think the color, I like to have dark flies. I like to have lighter flies. But the most important thing, well, I guess I like to have dark flies and light flies. I like to have longer flies and more compact flies. And I like to have flies that look more like something long and slender and then something that looks more like a crab, which is kind of a little more roundish, kind of wider profile. Now. Once you get some some different flies that you're comfortable with, one of the things, probably the most important thing, is the sink rate. Now, the sink rate means everything because as a bonefish or redfish or any kind of fish like that, bonefish particularly, as they're swimming along the flat, you're going to see this fish and you're going to have to determine by the sink rate, you've got something tied on too late to change it now. You're going to have to determine how long is it going to take for that fly to sink to the bottom because the bonefish is going along the bottom and it's really looking at the bottom. It may eat a minnow or something up higher in the water column, but your chances are going to be very good if you can have your fly on the bottom when the bonefish comes up to it and then as it gets closer, you move it and usually that fish pounces right on it. So we want, if possible, we want to put the fly out in front of the fish, have it on the bottom by the time the fish gets to it. So that is why you're going to see a lot of different types of flies that are going to have different eyes, like bead chain or lead eyes, different size lead eyes. You're going to see that there's lots of different types of, of materials that the flies are tied from. And I have a little selection right here in front of me that will kind of We'll kind of go over. And if you're listening to this, I'm going to go over these flies in a way that you're going to be able to understand what I'm holding as well. Now, I've got these flies arranged. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flies. Nine flies arranged from what I would consider to sink the slowest to what I would consider to sink the fastest. And the slowest sinking fly is actually one of the larger flies. It has a tremendous amount of material on this fly. And the more material you have on a fly, 
the it's going to act like a parachute and it's not going to quite sink quite as fast. So this has a lot of dubbing. It has some what looks like uh, uh, hare's ear kind of dubbing on it. It's got a couple of couple of feathers, kind of as the wing, and it's got a tail, and it has bead chain eyes. So with a bead chain eyes, that's very light. So not only does this fly not have very much weight on it, it also has a lot of material that is going to keep it from sinking very fast. So I'm going to choose this fly if the fish are in very, very shallow water. And I want to make a presentation that has this fly hit the water very, very softly and sink very slowly. So this is like a tailing fly. I'm going to throw this at a fish that's tailing. I don't want to spook it. I don't want it to crash into the water. I want it to, to um, make a very easy entrance to the water, and I want it to sink down slowly. And I may even be able to get a bite from a bonefish by making this look like a minnow instead of uh, something that's right on the bottom. So it may not even sink all the way to the bottom before the fish gets there. If that happens, I want it to look natural like that. So that's the, that's the slowest sinking one. The second slowest sinking is kind of a crazy Charlie, very sparsely tied uh, fish uh, fly that I took to Christmas Island with me. I think this was made famous by Moana, one of the guides over there. I think it's called a, uh, I don't know what it is, it's yellow. It has some dubbing around the bead chain eyes, and it's a very small fly. So it doesn't have a lot of weight. The bead chain is 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 very very light. It's going to be just enough uh, weight to get this thing to the bottom, and you you're going to see the fish coming. You're going to cast this out in front of it. Uh, it will hit the bottom, and you'll be able to move it, and they usually bounce or pounce right on top of it. But that's kind of a slower sinking fly. The next one is one that looks a little bit more like a shrimp. This is a longer a longer um, profile, but again, it's got bead chain eyes on it. The bead chain eyes on this one are slightly bigger than these other two, so this one's going to sink a little faster. Those are kind of the biggest bead chain eyes that I particularly use on any of my flies. So the next fly that I would choose for the sink rate would be one with the smallest lead eyes possible. And again, it's small lead eyes, but there is a good amount of material on it that's going to make it kind of like a parachute, so it's going to sink down a little bit slower. Um, you move up to the next one. It's a sparse. It's a more sparsely tied fly with the same size lead eyes. The sparsely tied fly with the same size eyes is going to sink quicker because it doesn't have the parachute kind of on it. So then we move up to the next one, same size lead eyes, and this is what I call the green worm. The green worm is a fly that I just killed them in Christmas Island because the first time I went to Christmas Island, I saw green worm. And uh, I figured, well, the fish must be eating that thing. I don't know what it was, but the fish definitely like it. And all this is is some material like you would see on an offshore uh, dolphin uh, teaser, and I just took a little bit of that, lash it to the hook with some lead eyes, and I have about a two-inch fly here uh, on a small hook. This has no hackle or anything else, so it is going to slip right through the water and go right to the bottom, so I don't need heavy lead eyes, and, um, and that sink rate is going to be just a little bit heavier than the others. You step up and you keep going to heavier um, lead eyes and if the if the eyes are heavier and the fly is very sparse that is going to be one that makes it all the way to the bottom this is probably the heaviest fly in my box it's another one i took to christmas island it kind of like the banana split or moana special i think is what it's called just a couple of feathers little chenille and heavy lead eyes it's going to go right to the bottom and lastly i've got a crab fly and the crab fly probably has the heaviest lead eyes on it of all of these, these, but again, it's got more material. So you'd have to make sure that your crab flies are sinking as quickly as you want them because oftentimes the crab fly will not turn on its end and sink like a bonefish fly, like all of these others where the, the weight is at the very end. That makes a big difference because if you have a fly like a clouser or a, um, a crazy Charlie, the weight is right on the eye. So the fly, especially if you tie it with a loop knot, the fly is able to turn like this and go right to the bottom. A lot of these um, crab flies 
may float down to the bottom, kind of, kind of like this, kind of, kind of hover down to the bottom, like like a paper plate would in the ocean, uh, rather than like a dart would. When you when you sit when you throw a dart, you know, towards the ground, it's going to go right into the into the dirt. Where if you throw a feather, it's going to kind of float down to the earth. So a lot of times the crab flies can be very heavy, but because of their shape, they don't sink as quickly as you might like. So you want to always tie it on, look at it, see how it floats, see how it sinks, and make sure that you're aware of that because it's super, super important. You have to be, you have to know how long it's going to take for that fly to make it to the bottom for you to fish effectively. Because if you throw out what you think is far enough in front of a fish and you are waiting for it to hit the bottom and you start stripping, a lot of times you're over that fish's head. It's, it's not looking at it. It's not seeing it. That's not what it's interested in eating. So you had a, a fly that they would have eaten. You made a good cast, but just not far enough out in front and it didn't sink down deep enough. And that's why you didn't get bit. So those are, those are some ideas on how to choose a bonefish fly. When I, when I look in my bonefish box, I don't have a whole lot of different flies, but I do have a lot of different sink rates. And um, I don't think it's as important what the fly looks like as that it sinks at the rate required for that fishing situation. So you want to have, you don't know exactly what fishing situation you're going to be in, what stage are you going to find them on exactly? I don't know. So I always have a whole bunch of different flies in there. And if it's not sinking fast enough, I change it. If they start, you know, the tide's coming in, they get up real super shallow, they start tailing, and that's where you're finding them, and you want to go try those, you need, you definitely need flies that you can throw to a tailing fish that aren't going to get stuck in the bottom immediately and aren't going to scare the fish, you know, as soon as it hits the water. So that's my advice. A lot of different sink rates, and uh, make sure you make sure you got that covered. All right. I hope that helps you to uh, be able to choose a bonefish fly. And... Um, these are all good choices right here. So anything that looks like these, you're going to be able to catch bonefish pretty much anywhere in the world.